Something different on the bench today. And I really have to straighten out this camera. It is so crooked. All right, so I don't do a lot of reel-to-reels. <clears throat> um, I do them for the shops, though. And uh, typically what I do is uh, wait till I get a few. And especially these uh, TX 4010s. They must have made a billion of these. Because right now I have uh, one, two, three, four, plus an A1500, which is mechanically very, very, very similar. Right, so um, I think I can get three of these, four running. I'm going to use one. I've already used one as a parts machine. Here's what's going on with this one. Uh, where's my power cord? I didn't plug it in. Why would I be prepared? This is all I got going on this morning. So why, why would I be ready? So let me move this and... Ooh. Plug it in. All right. And show you what it's doing. I've already gone in and replaced the belt. I do have a video where I, I replaced the belt on a 4010, so I'm not going to show you that here. But I want you to watch this right meter when I turn it on. Right meter doesn't move. So we're going to replace that right meter. I could not find any video anywhere that covers this. And the, uh, the service manual is okay in terms of disassembly. Um, so here's the interesting thing. So this uh, preamp is what it is. This preamp module is an AR40S. I guess they had a couple of different uh, preamps that they put in these. Um, this is the AR40S. The schematic for this is not in the service manual. It's actually in the owner's manual. So if you get a 4010 and you need to work on this, uh, I, I, I'm almost positive because I looked it up last night and I found it. I didn't verify that it was the 40S. It may, may have been the other preamp, but I'm pretty sure it's a 40S in there. Um, one too many cocktails last night when I was looking it up. <laughs> All right, so how do we get this thing out of here? So, number one, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the test procedures to verify that the meter is actually bad, which I've done, but I'm gonna show you anyway. <clears throat> so, if we remove, I'm gonna remove both the bottom and the top panel, and it's only four screws. Pretty easy to remove. Now, I'm guessing as to how to remove the meter assembly or the meter itself. So you're gonna, you're gonna flow along with me as I try this. So, and then the other, removing the other side, same procedure. And I, I may have to turn this to where you can see what's going on. So I may have to either flip it. In fact, I probably will have to flip it uh, reorient it, twist it 180 degrees so you can see it. Filming this, uh, what, the day before Thanksgiving 2023? I don't know why I mentioned that, but I did. All right, so I believe I can't see anything holding the meters in place other than four screws and I'll show you those after I remove them four screws and then the meters it looks like the wires actually screw into them but before I do that let me show you the test procedures um, again I think I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna unplug it because I don't need power to it right now so let me do this And I did a very short video on testing meters, like one of the earlier videos I shot for the channel. So I'll just prop that up there like so. And what you do, or what I do, what I have done on this one is set your multimeter to diode. 
right? So on this one, I hit that until I see the little diode test symbol right there. And first on the good meter, <clears throat> I think I can get that from here. Now you should see it jump. See that jump when I hit it? So the meter, this meter is good. If I do that on the other side, you'll see no movement. All right. If I reverse the leads, just in case I got it backwards, because it is kind of hard to see in here. Whoops. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, if I reverse the leads, no movement. All right? So nothing. So that meter, I'm pretty comfortable saying that meter is dead. Um, once I pull it out, I'll test it again. Testing it in circuit isn't ideal. So now to remove it, I have a what is this? A six millimeter. Socket on here, and I got my little flex. Oh man, hopefully I can get it in there. We have to use an actual socket. Let me go grab that and come back. All right, so this side is probably easier to do it this way. All right, well. I think you get the picture. I'm not going to waste battery and memory doing this. So I'm going to remove all four screws and then we're going to see if we can get this meter out of there. Sorry about that. I uh, like to listen to the radio as I when I shut my camera off. All right, so here's the... Wait. <laughs> That's a good meter. I love it when I do that. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad. So, let me see if I can get this out of here. Did I remove? Make sure I got everything off here. There we go. Just a little bit of coaxing to get the meter out, but the meter's out. So let me show you what you're looking at here on the back. So flipped, right? You've got four screws that hold that in place. And then the wires are actually screwed into the back of this. Now, as you can see, right? So if the meter is sitting upright, looking at the back, Here's how the wires go in, at least on this one I've got a single white red, I've got a black, this actually has two single wires, one going each direction, and then a green coming in from the left and two black coming in from the left, two green coming in from the left, two black. Just in case you get one of these and like it's missing or something, at least that's how it's pinned out here. All right, so that's the meter, so let's test it. So positive and negative, just to be sure that it is indeed bad. Now you're not gonna be able to see well, maybe you will. If you can see, yeah, you can kind of see if it jumps. So, because again, I tested that in circuit, so there is a chance that the meter is good. And if it is, then I've got some other stuff I got to do. I have to get the schematic out and see what's going on. So, no movement and. No movement. So I'm comfortable saying that meter is dead. I'm going to save the cover though. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the meter from the donor unit. I'm going to pop this plastic cover off. And this one had two cracked covers. The other one has two good covers. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure what's bad with the meter. I mean, it moves and it goes back into its position, but I'm not a meter guru, so I have no idea. So anyway, I'm going to 
remove the donor. I'm going to come back and put the donor meter in and then we're going to power it on and see if this actually fixed it. Okay, so I have not <clears throat> mounted the meter. Um, it's just sitting in there right now. So fingers crossed. We see some activity. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to finish putting it in. Uh, I'm going to swap out this other cover. Put that one on there. Make sure that doesn't obstruct anything. All right. <clears throat> So that was it. That's all I wanted to do with this one. It was just show you the meter replacement. Now I'm going to finish screwing this in. I have to clean this up. This came off a unit that was pretty rough. So uh, Anyway, oh, and then I know that some of you can see this. That popped off for some reason as I was working on it. So <clears throat> I have to remember to glue that back into position. So anyway, there you go. There's the meter, meter swap on a TIAC 4010S. If you want to see how I replace the belt, I have a video on that on the channel. If you want to see how to completely go through one of these and rebuild it and do all the stuff, uh, I don't have one of those. But there are some, several very, very, very well done videos out there that you can watch. Maybe that's stuck back in there. No, it's not. All right. So, as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe. Catch you in the next video.